Welcome to week four of our discussion of database design. In fact, this is going to be the last session. We'll talk about database design and we'll wrap up everything this time. You're familiar with this diagram by now. We've looked at it every single week. We know that in terms of how an application actually works, you've got a user who's interacting with a browser. Request goes over to a server computer and the server computer goes to the database, extracts whatever information is required, puts it together with other information, sends it back to the browser and the user sees it. Okay, that's the interaction between the user, the browser, and the server and the database system. Now you already understand what a relational database looks like. We know that it's a collection of tables with relationships between the various tables maintained through foreign keys. And you also know structured query language or SQL that is used to access the database. So you know that once information is stored inside a database in the form of tables, then depending on whatever request the user makes, appropriate SQL can be issued to the database. Information can be retrieved and sent back to the user. Okay, and we've already seen how given the way a database is designed, you can extract pretty much any piece of information you want from it. Okay. Of course, that can be done only if the database is properly designed. If it's not well designed, then of course, you're not going to be able to extract information from it properly. And that's the part that we are looking at now, which is database design. Okay. And the tool that we are going to, that we have learned in order to do this is the entity relationship diagram. And by now we have looked at quite a bit. We've done two assignments and uh, looking at what people have done in the assignments, I am quite confident they, that you understand pretty well what's going on. In this lecture, we'll be learning just two additional concepts, two new concepts. After that, we'll complete our discussion of entity relationship diagrams and then consider how once we have the entity relationship diagram, how do we get the actual database from it? In other words, the set of tables. We'll be looking at that. But first, Consider this scenario. Every employee other than the CEO reports to one manager and each manager has zero or more subordinates. What kind of an ER diagram can we draw for this scenario? It's quite possible that you might have thought of something like this. You've got a manager has several employees reporting to him or her and every employee reports to one, a zero or one manager. Okay, employees relate to zero managers because there's one employee, the CEO, who doesn't report to any manager. And of course, everybody at the bottom rung of the uh, organization chart has nobody reporting to them. So you can have that. Or alternately, you may say, well, if they are a manager, then obviously they have people reporting to them. So this line should be solid. You could do that. But I'm not going to spend too much time bickering about that because this diagram is plain wrong. Why is that the case? Well, think about it. This diagram somehow makes it appear as if instances of employee and instances of manager are you know, instances of two different entity types. Is that really the case? Not true, because managers are also employees. Many employees are also managers. Okay, it's really instances of manager or instances of employees. So really what we have in this scenario is one entity type called employee. Okay, so this initial attempt is invalid. This is not correct. Okay, so we need to rethink how do you do this. Before we do that, let's take a look at an, a sample organization chart. You've got Michelle who is the Chief, chief executive at the top of the hierarchy. You've got David, Melissa and Dang reporting to Michelle. And then you've got Myron and Albert reporting to David and Rosalind reporting to Dan. That's the organization chart. Okay, so clearly uh, Michelle is an employee and a manager. David, Melissa and Deng are employee and manager. Uh, sorry, David and Deng are employee and manager. Melissa is not a manager, just an employee. Myron, Albert and Rosalind are also not managers, just employees. Okay, but all of these people, these six, seven people 
are all employees okay so what we have here is some employees related to other employees right some employees have a reporting relationship to other employees so there is a relationship it's not as if there is no relationship there is a relationship but what you have is entities instances of the employee entity type are related to entity instances other entity instances of the same entity type okay so that's the that's what we have here and one employee reports to one other employee or none and therefore you see Michelle doesn't report to any employee and one employee manages zero or many employees and those in the bottom have no subordinates in other words Myron Albert Melissa and Rosalind have no subordinates okay so how do you represent this scenario the way you represent this scenario is by using what is called as a unary relationship in other words it's a relationship in which only one entity type is involved some instances of the entity type are related to other instances of the same entity type okay of course you know that even in earlier relationships that we have considered it was always a relationship between entity types but of course what are actually related are the entity instances okay so for example you've got an employee who's got a car right the broad relate the broad ER diagram shows employee entity type and car entity type connected but in reality specific employees are connected to specific cars okay so you've got instances that are related so in this case what you're seeing is there are instances of some employees report to instances of uh, other instances of employee okay so you show a unary relationship by actually drawing a line from the entity type to itself okay so that's a unary relationship only one entity type is involved so it's called unary in other words all the relationships we've looked at so far have been binary relationships relationships that connected two entity types okay but it looked as if I mean we were talking all this time as if those are the only types of relationships that exist but now we are looking at other possibilities and we're looking at unary relationships to start with okay so again I've given names to the unary relationship which of course can be read going in one direction or going in the other direction let's read it from this direction each employee or an employee might be the manager of zero or more subordinates or zero or more employees okay and reading it the other way an employee might be the subordinate of zero or one employee okay so you can read this relationship exactly like you read the binary relationships except that you traverse it in the appropriate direction okay so that's really what we get now how does it look in the form of a table if you look at the table you can see here that uh, notice that this time the foreign key after all this is a one-to-many relationship and if it's a one-to-many relationship we already know that the primary key of the entity type on the one side is added as a foreign key to the entity type on the many side but in this case both are the same and therefore we add the employee ID as a foreign key you know using the term foreign key seems sort of odd but that's the only term we have here right of course we cannot call it employee ID again because you already have an employee ID in this table so we're calling it manager ID that's the ID of the manager take a look at how this table looks okay Michelle Donahue that is Michelle here doesn't have any manager so manager ID is blank or null David has Michelle as his manager and therefore David's manager ID is 10 which happens to be employee ID of Michelle Melissa's manager ID is also 10 because Michelle is Melissa's boss and Melissa's uh, and Michelle's uh, employee ID is also 10 similarly Deng manager ID is 10 that's because Michelle is his manager and so on okay so you can see how this unary relationship pans out in the form of a table you add you do the normal things there's no difference really between 
the binary relationships, one to many relationships we've seen so far. We add the foreign key in one table. This time, <coughs> the table on both sides of relationship of the relationship is exactly the same, and therefore you add its own primary key again. And it makes sense because you're saying somebody is the manager of a particular employee. Every employee has zero or one manager, so we indicate the ID of the manager. Okay, we just give it a different name. That's it. So that is how unary relationships actually work.